Hi guys, welcome to CMD and another video. You join me back in the Smart Roadster Brabus Coupe. For those of you not new to the channel, you'll be aware that I picked up this car at the end of 2020. Uh, I won it at auction. And if you haven't seen the videos on that journey, go and check those out. There'll be pop-up banners in, in places where pop-up banners go. There's the collection and also the sort of eight month journey that we've been on to get the car roadworthy, which is uh, well worth a watch for anyone considering to buy one of these. Uh, hopefully it'll show up a lot of gremlins that you can find on older examples of these cars. But now I get to tell you why I love these cars so much and get to talk to you about the experience of driving them. So without further ado, just quickly, before I go, if you like the hoodie, we have a range of clothing available at controlandshift.com. You'll have seen them in places like Joe Achilles, Steph ATB, uh, Petrol Ped. Uh, they do a range of automobilia clothing, um, of which we are very fortunate to be a part of, and they are a huge part in helping to raise money for great causes through CMD. So if you like what you see, have a look on their website, do a buy and thank you so much for the support. Smart Roads to Review, take 37 and a half. <laughs> So I think what I'd like to do in this review is talk you through why I'm so besotted with this thing, because I really am. I owned one of these 14 years ago. It wasn't a Brabus, it was a, a smart Roadster Coupe. And it was, and is still to this day, the funnest car I ever owned. I was obviously younger then, so insurance was much, much harder and trying to find a car that I could run economically on a budget and have a smile on my face without picking up a Skoda Fabia, not that there's anything wrong with Skoda Fabias by the way, was difficult. And I stumbled across a Smart Roadster by chance. I drove past one and I thought, I'll have a look into those. So let's deal with the stats first. 101 brake horsepower, rear engined, rear wheel drive, <laughs> three valve, six cylinder, <laughs> Mercedes unit in the back. Good for naught to 60 in nine seconds, which sounds slow because it is. But with that said as well, I would say it feels an awful lot faster and a lot more fun than the figures might suggest. You get an automatic gearbox, which is notoriously slow. I'll give you an indication. We're coming to 30 now. I'm in fifth and we're in fourth, fourth, down to third, third. You can operate that via the gear knob in auto mode, which is what I'm in now so the car will do it all for you itself. You can click the button on the gear knob and it'll go into automatic. You can run the automatic gears off either flappy paddles, which for me don't work because as I flip it down from third, or let's go up a gear into fourth now, there's fourth. It's too slow for me to operate on a flappy paddle. I think flappy paddle comes good on my M2 comp with a DCT gearbox where you need to be holding on to that steering wheel while the car is changing gear at a rate so quick, there's no way I could do it that quick myself manually. But if you operate it via the gear selector down the bottom and just sort of punch it up and down a bit like a sequential, then what you get is almost, almost the manual experience. And what I mean by that is hand down, change gear, hand back on the steering wheel and go, which creates a much more involved driving experience. And that's really what this car is, is really all about. The 35 litre fuel tank is tiny, 
but to give you some indication I've driven this for over 103 miles and I haven't done half the tank yet even if I drive this aggressively non-stop on short journeys I still achieve 45 miles to the gallon it is comfortably capable of achieving 50 mile per gallon all day long cheap to insure cheap to tax cheap to run three good little boxes checked for a commuter you get some creature comforts in here as well air conditioning I mean like you need it you can have the roof off but air conditioning if it is an extremely hot day and heated seats if it's an extremely cold day and you would like that tush warmed up a little bit you get electric windows electric roof which operates at any speed doing 40 mile an hour at the moment and it'll operate the same as if I was sat still a greenhouse in the back if you need it in the coupe variant of the car and you get a frunk a little bit of netting some door bins that are no good for anything I can genuinely just about fit my glasses case in and it's not really in there and a glove box which again is big enough for your wallet and some keys and the, the lever for the frunk and an iPod connector if you've got a stereo that that does that up front very simple I've got I've got a bar pressure boost gauge temperature in front I've got my speed my revs and an electronic dial which gives me gear time kilometers an hour range trip computer so on paper it's not a great recipe you wouldn't look at it and pick it over a Mazda MX-5 BMW Z3 necessarily it doesn't have the credentials but think about it it really does and let's not forget this thing is light I know the power numbers are low but so is the weight I think this thing weighs in at about 850 kilograms you'll have to forgive me I'll put the accurate figure up now but certainly under a ton and what you get for that is an awful lot of fun far more than the numbers might suggest here we go and this is the beauty of it the numbers and the data and the reputation would have you think that it's no fun to drive but what that number doesn't show you is just how capable this thing is around the corners it's light it's darty the drives in the right place and it just absolutely lives for this and whilst the gearbox is slow you certainly have to work for any sort of performance I would argue that's part of the enjoyment And yes, there are more practical cars out there, more economical cars out there, more sporty, most certainly faster. But on a day like today, early morning, quiet roads, time to yourself. You know, I've got a BMW M car and I can genuinely tell you that this is as much fun. But when you talk about having fun in cars, this car is more fun on a normal road than my M2. Because in the M2, I can extract 100% of the performance for about a gear and a half before I'm breaking the law. Okay, and I'm not saying it's, it's not a great car because it really, really is. But you are constantly feathering, holding back performance, conscious of where you are, how safe it is, and that's fine and those cars really come alive on track it's what they were built for quite frankly and that's why they are unbeatable and I wouldn't dream of taking this to a track instead of the M2 it just it would be sacrilege quite frankly however if I know I've got to run to the office or a b-road blast and I don't need four seats and a big boot and I can get by I would take this over the M2 
day in, day out. And that might surprise you, but think about it. Why wouldn't you? Roof off. Economical. Cheap to run. Living the dream. And if you are considering one of them, I would, I would beg you to. If you're looking in this sort of market, I mean, A, they're cheap, and B, they're quite exclusive. I think last time I checked, there was only about a thousand of these on the road, i.e. The, the Brabus. If you go on Auto Trader right now, you'll see examples of this car with 130,000 miles on the clock, and it'll be serviced, and they're well built. Don't get me wrong, some of the materials are a bit plasticky, but under the cover in there is a very well built Mercedes engine. The electronics are fine. They can be prone to leaking. So ideally you want the car garaged, but it can cope outside. The one I had ran over two years outside without a single bother. It was, it was perfectly fine. And the only other thing I would mention, especially on the Brabus, is the alloy monoblock wheels are beautiful. I'm a big fan. They're immensely easy to clean, which makes them great in my eyes. But they are also an absolute bitch when it comes to buckling them. And again, if you look at the videos where the car was collected and the most recent video I've done on this car, where we talked about the work that was carried out, every single wheel was heavily buckled. I think it's a punchy little number. I really do. And they're good value. You know, I wanted a Brabus because I always wanted a Brabus when I was younger, but I'd have been just as happy in the stock car, genuinely. Okay, yeah, there's more power in the Brabus. I can't tell you that I noticed that. And these things run. So if you are mechanically minded or you know someone who is that will entertain what you need doing on the car, I would implore you, empower you to go and give one of these a look as a fun little two-seater so that when the sun shines you can get out there and put a smile on your face and when you get to the petrol station or if you stop in a town you will get asked what the car is and discuss it with many people i have been asked more questions about this car in the last two months than i have about my m2 competition in the last two years so when I've taken people out in it, it's funny, you don't notice when you're driving, but it turns an awful lot of people's heads from a sort of, what is that point of view? And the reason I haven't noticed is that, quite frankly, I've been having too much fun driving the thing. And isn't that what driving's all about? Fresh air and having some fun without getting in trouble with the police and without it costing a fortune. Absolute winner. Gonna go around. <laughs> oh yeah. Gotta preempt it. Oh I love this corner. Oh I love this corner in this car. If you've made it this far. Thank you for tuning in and for listening to my waffle. If you've got any questions on the car or want to know more, feel free to, to get in touch on the comment section below. And just a final thank you and sign off for me. We are in the process of turning this channel into a 100% not-for-profit charity. That means every view, like, subscription, any revenue we generate anywhere on YouTube and from any sales with controlandshift.com on hoodies, t-shirts, stickers, bottles, etc. is all going a big way to making a big difference in other people's lives. We are just in the process now of organizing our first triple figure donation. More on that to come. And that is all down to people like you who tune into videos like this. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart and I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Cheers.